It's episode 103 of SETI BIMCO, part two, The Revenge. This week, we're going to watch 1977's Whiskey, Whiskey Mountain, Mountain. Chosen by me. Yeah, yeah, you, may, you make sure you take credit for that one. Hey. I don't want to be blamed for this movie. <laughs> if you people have ever seen Deliverance, this is, uh, you know. Which year did Deliverance come out, Tim? I kept meaning to look that up, but never did. Like 73. Oh, so this is just, this is just a terrible copy. <laughs> That's. We'll get to it. We'll okay. get to that. First, the age old question, George. Your favorite oh part. boy, what is it going to be? It's going to be so good. Did Dolly the Sheep? Does everybody remember uh-huh. Dolly the Sheep? Those clones? Dolly in the Sheep, the first cloned animal, yeah. Did, did Dolly ever get revenge on the scientist who cloned her and named her Dolly, even though her favorite character in 9 to 5 was Lily Tomlin's character, Violet? Uh, I love that you layered references people won't remember on top of references that oh, people won't remember. People love that movie. <laughs> yeah. It's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. The show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. Seti Bimco, it's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. Woo! The, the premier podcast that makes revenge sequels, right, George? Well, I like to say America's premiere uh, sequel that's themed about... Let me start over again. I like to say America's premiere revenge-based sequel uh, creating podcast because, especially in this instance, we're in the middle of our season three, actually, where we take a regional tour of the United States visiting different regional filmmakers, one filmmaker for a state, and we're going to see a a beautiful film. No, they won't be beautiful. Some will. (laughs) Some will be terrible from each and every state of this great union of ours. Do we ever decide, are we going to do Guam and Puerto Rico and other territories? Oh, I don't know. Wow. Maybe we should. We'll see. Wow. Well, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I mean, and, we got to support fact, their, I mean, we want them to be more you know, involved in our democracy. What better way to bring them in than yeah. by featuring their independent filmmakers? And, and every week when we watch a movie. We ask ourselves yep. a wild card question. Who from this the movie wild card question is likely? drawn out of a bucket? It's a number and a science to something. Tim, what is the number? Number 22 on my list. And that is? This week, we're going to ask who from this movie is most likely to appear on a game show called New Mexico or Old Mexico? <laughs> on a game show. It's too bad we're not doing New Mexico this week. I know, but that's why it's a wild card question, George. I thought they were all going to be about... Oh, I guess Mexico, old Mexico is a foreign country. Yeah, these are all international. All right, as America's uh, foremost uh, revenge-themed podcast, do we have any charming and heartwarming stories of real-life revenge? No. No. I've fallen down on that job. And I meant to say, they could could be historical, you know. So if someone murdered someone 50 years ago, we we can laugh about it. That's the whole basis of like the true crime like industry. Like if it's long enough ago, you don't have to feel bad anymore. No. If the only surviving photos of the murder victims are black and white, it's like, ah, mm-hmm. they'd probably be dead anyway. But no, that's what they say. It's not what yeah. I say. Every if someone named Z- Zapruder filmed the murder. Oh, my know? God. <laughs> it's, it's, it's OK. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. I want people to make a bingo of SETI Bimco with the things that just get stuck in your head. I will Can make you that. imagine? Yeah. Stuck in my head that I might mention. Yeah, well, I mean, because that's the way it works. Well, that's a like, bingo. I'm sure if you're a, bingo if you're game. A, it would be, except for like eventually these things do cycle out of your head. Like, I think we're at the tail end of the pet rock craze that gripped you. Yes, I've been keeping it alive a little bit, bringing it up a lot. Like, also, I feel like the Pete Best, the original drummer for the Beatles, he's on his way out. If you yep. go back and listen to the archives early on, Tim couldn't stop talking about Maud and that old yeah. British show about like old people going through the locks of England. Like stuff just get oh the young pope did that ever make on this or was that in like real life? No, that's real life. Uh, it's, that was something Tim did to his friends. <laughs> Tim just gets it's obsessed with stuff. Uh, I'm moving on we'll to never culture watch club. it because of your culture, culture club. Yeah, culture now club history. Now Tim Everybody, is obsessed George with is mid eighties band culture on club. Broadway playing uh, in Moulin Rouge. Who's he going to play? It Ooh, didn't say. I, we don't or, know. Actually, oh, we they. discussed this. George, he, who's is they going to George play? George is they. Who's I, they? I believe so. We should, uh, folks, if you know how Boy George, which pronouns that person uses, yeah, I don't please know. I write forgot. to us. I don't know either. I'm, you know, it's probably in flux. 
just my kidding. knowledge of Boy George is pretty much eighty four to eighty six centric. Yep. So who knows what Boy George has done in the intervening decades? Yep, so that's my video. I'm ch- I'm checking out those Peter Gabriel videos. All right, yeah, you are just really keeping it timely. You know, <laughs> you know Speaking the one he filmed of with. Time, wait, the one he filmed with wait, um, Kate Lincoln. Bush. The video he made with Kate Bush. Did you ever see that? It's, they're just hugging each other, and the camera slowly turns around. They, they, don't they, don't they hug up. each other the whole time. That's because yep. uh, he said he wanted Lou, his assistant. You know, his assistant's name was Lou. He said, "I need Lou," and they misheard him, and they said they brought him some some glue. That's why they're stuck together as they sing that song. Don't give up. That sucks. I'll so just hard. cut this out. I don't know. Yeah, you should. All right. <laughs> When is this episode going to air? I think like 27th. March 26th, March 27th. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, cool. Then I want to tell you, uh, I'm going to into Tim. I actually want to break with our tradition Uh-oh. and actually share a bit of my real life experiences here. We okay. used to do this on the podcast, but the podcast became more troubling in its content. And now I no longer feel comfortable mentioning it while I speak to other people. And this kind of ties into what I'm going to be on. Oh, okay. So uh, the date this podcast released, or maybe the day before, but I think it's the day it released, is the day that my new book, As Guardians, book number one, Odin, releases in stores Ooh, everywhere. Wow. So that's pretty cool. But it's also cool. What is, is that, Tim? Uh, it's uh, it's either a Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. March I hope 27th. it's a Wednesday because Wednesday is Odin's day, but I'm ah. not really sure. <gasps> and Wait, Odin is see. mentioned I've, in this movie. He is entered in this movie, but even oh, more we'll importantly, Tim. Yes. Keep going. I did get excited at that point. <laughs> uh, also dropping today, the same day, there is the podcast, Stuff That Blows Your Mind. Stuff to Blow okay. Your Mind. I don't uh-huh. know if you know this podcast. They have a few more listeners than us. I was recently a guest I, on this. I love their podcast. You were a oh, guest? Oh, you do, really? You're I was a guest. guest. And it's going to be airing the same day as this. So if you don't competing. get enough, George. Competing. Competing. <laughs> For your podcast dollar, I am a guest on Stuff to Blow Your Mind. But this is what's really exciting, Tim. I mean, I talk all about my new book series in Norse mythology and stuff. It's very cool. Those are they're, It's a great podcast. I'm actually a huge fan. And I suspect that I should be best friends with these guys because they cover a lot of stuff we're interested in. Oh, like and Sasquatch. they do uh, the they do like weird movie reviews on Friday. Oh. And I mean, they've hit some movies we've we've done. Oh, they're copying. And so I I think they've been doing it for a few years before us, but uh, they have also the host Robert Lamb and I were talking. They've done Boggy Creek too. Oh, nice! I recommended to them that I just said like you know, my uh, my podcast, Seti Bimco. We just did another Charles B. Pierce film, ah. the town that dreaded sundown. He's like, oh, should I watch it? I'm like, yeah, nah. <laughs> I made an inconclusive maybe. noise. Yeah, I'm like maybe. <laughs> but also, this is the really exciting part, Tim. Uh-oh. I recommended that he watch the Jack Weiss collection. Oh, okay. I does was he, like, look, these might be it? too trash. No, he did not. I'm mm-hmm. like, these might be too trashy for you. These might be the sort of movies that you don't want to cover. These are the, This is the reason why I'm afraid to mention Seti Bimco, because of this and my, <laughs> host, my co-host's predilection for mentioning Nazis. I said, you might want to check out. And I recommended Mardi Gras Massacre as the first one I go in. Okay. You might as well jump right in the deep end. <laughs> But it's pretty that, exciting. Yeah, that is. Did he also yeah. say, uh, uh, "Do you do which collection of the Lockhorns do you have? The, the, nope. the newer nope, one? No, he did or? not. Because no one, no. <laughs> the artist edition. Which, I mean, <laughs> I you know, I was listening recently, and I feel bad we pick on the Lockhorns. You know, can well, we switch to a comic where the creators are all dead? <laughs> yeah. Well, we Tim, you and I have friends in common with these I've, people. Oh. Well, hey, I just have to be honest. It's a weird premise, okay? A weird premise. Couples fighting on Long Island. Yes. I, I can't. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie about who I am. This is our <laughs> show to be honest on. As long you as know I what I've never actually dam- mentioned, damage too? your career. <laughs> I, yeah, seriously. I've mentioned many times how I introduced, how, I mean, I interviewed the cartoonist of Lockhorns, John Reiner, from my high school newspaper. I've yes. never mentioned this story. Uh-oh. I was actually at a dinner honoring he and Bunny like some years ago. Oh, wow. Like I was a guest in attendance at like, it was the uh, National Cartoonist <laughs> Society. And like I went there with a friend who was a member and was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and now like heaven forbid he ever them? finds – 
I said, hey, I interviewed you. I uh-huh. went up to him. No, no I'm not going to say this. <laughs> I went up to him and said, buddy, I hear you don't write it all. John does. And I just threw that verbal hand grenade right in the middle of this. It nice. ended. He threw into a giant cake. <laughs> Face first. Of course. There's no other way to throw a person into a giant cake. Oh, a giant cake. It was lucky there wasn't like a stripper in there. There was. There was. That was the awkward part. <laughs> yeah. Kathy Geiswhite, the creator of Kathy's in there. And you know what wow. she said? What? She said, act. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Man, this is a good podcast. <laughs> All right. Should we get to the movie? Should I play banjo music? I've recorded all that music, yeah. so here's some banjo <laughs> music. Yeah, it's, so it's pretty rocking. Not much to say about the people in this movie, except for our kind of star. He was in a lot of westerns. Christopher George, uh, I believe. Which one was he? Okay. The for main, the the main time, tough guy who lived the longest. Bill, the I believe, in the tough story. guy. Oh, the bad guy. No, no, our hero. Oh, okay. Jumped his motorcycle. The, the, Hope we watch the same. Oh, movie. that guy. I guess he was the main one. Yeah, the um, the main bad guy. When we reveal who that is, I have to mm-hmm. share my amazement at that actor. Oh, I didn't even realize. I, I recognized him, but you do tell me. You probably will know what I'm. Well, who he is? He's definitely the. I would say he's the most famous guy in this movie. But ah. who is, can you give us a little background? So this movie is a representation of the great state of North Carolina. Yep, it was inhabited for at least ten thousand years oh. by. Succeeding We're not even talking about the movie. We're talking indig- about North Carolina facts. Okay, indigenous cultures. All right. Yep. I saw that same first line. When you type in North Carolina facts, people, there's a website that comes up, and that's literally the first line. That's what my co-host Tim did. <laughs> All right, what else, Tim? <laughs> uh, that's it. I mean, the people that originally lived there, they built earthwork pl- earthwork platform mounds, which were used for uh-huh. ceremonial and religious purposes, so we think. Wow, that's good. We, we it's know good that you're not, you're not clearly reading this without <laughs> comprehending it. That's good. We know they were built by giants that mm. the Smithsonian the keeps Smithsonian secret from us. from us. Yes, <laughs> nice. Put that in your bingo card, whoever makes the bingo cards. I think, I bet you, uh, I'm not reading this. I believe North Carolina is where... Blackbeard met his end. Uh, I believe that's that actually right? that's actually a true fact. I believe. Yeah, the the governor yep. went out and did battle with him. Back then, they were called the governor. Governor, yeah, yep. governor. Yep, Blackbeard the pirate. That's a true story. Oh, are we doing facts for? I have facts for. I have a bunch of facts for North Carolina too. Should I start yeah, sharing let's mine? Go. Let's go. I thought we'd do it later. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, no Sasquatch has ever held public elected office in the entire state of That's North good. Carolina. Did you know that? That's a. That's I good. thought you'd be interested in that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. You can see South Carolina from parts of North Carolina, but you'd probably prefer not to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is this your list? You're sneaking a list <laughs> this, in. You started. You sneaky, you sneaky um, person. Tim, I want to see if you get this one. Okay. It was founded by Sir Walter Raleigh. He was such a stupid git. Ah, uh, uh, stupid git. Isn't that Beatles song? Is that lyric from the? I'm so th- tired. The Beatles song. Yes, I did that for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So tired. This is a true story that I've. This is true. I have no joke for this. Oral sex is a class one felony in North Carolina to this day. Ooh. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, this. Oh, the first colony going back to the founding. The first in- colony by English people was on Roanoke Island. The Roanoke Ooh, Colony, yeah. which now falls within the borders of North Carolina. Of course, there's no North Carolina yet because it's before the United States. Yeah. And those people famously disappeared, yep. leaving only the word Croatoan written on a tree as a possible clue to the disappearance. For years, nobody knew what that understood, but now we realize it is actually a garbled message meaning it's a reference to giant size x-men number one Jesus. krakoa the island Let's that walks like out. a man nope you can't I'm gonna make references to it elsewhere <laughs> you have to that's why i put it in the middle <laughs> so they left to go wait for comic shops to be opened wow uh speaking of uh well, it's not really speaking but i want to make this so you can't cut it uh the first Whoa. official flight in cut the it. uh the wright brothers flight was yeah. over it was over kitty hawk in north carolina no 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 we're not doing it. <laughs> no it... ki- no kitty pride x-men <laughs> jokes oh you saw i was doing it well I saw, actually saw i was gonna coming. throw in the 
Uh, the Kitty Pride joke is in there as a side comment, but the other joke that I had as a backup in case you tried to put the kibosh <laughs> on it was their first flight was over the nearby town of Puppy Eagle, but that one was unsuccessful. Puppy Kitty Eagle. Hawk, Puppy Eagle. Uh, that's good. Kitty I like Pride it. of I like the X-Men, everybody. Kitty Pride. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me see. I have one that's actually pretty good. Okay, finally. Um, okay, and good. it is uh, North Carolina is the birthplace of Krispy Kreme, uh, Pepsi Cola, and the vast majority of cigarettes in the United States are grown there, making it also the home of diabetes. Of, uh, and cancer. <laughs> cancer, yes. <Right? laughs> yeah, I guess so. And I have two other facts. These are two true facts. Oh, my God. Tim, these two are especially for you. Okay. The oldest operating elevator oh, oh. in the United States oh. – is on the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina. Biltmore Estate is also the single largest private residence built in the United States. Mm. But the operate the elevator was installed by the Otis Elevator Company in 1895, and it's still in operation Oops. to serve visitors with disabilities. And mm. it's so it's been there since the 70s. 1895, yes. <laughs> it, well, it has been since the 70s and before. Okay. And <laughs> um, and. In February 1st, 1889, the first streetcar in North Carolina made its debut in Ooh. Asheville. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And on February 2nd, 1889, a bunch of children had their arms and legs cut off by it, reeling out <laughs> of control. Yep. Yeah. We don't even need to do the movie now. Otis. Otis L. Mm. Let's talk about a movie. Mm. Let's talk about this movie. <laughs> So, two couples, Bill and Diane, and Dan and Jamie, they travel into the rural mountains of North Carolina on a motorcycle trip. They intend to search the region for a number of antique Civil War rifles, which, da, let me finish, which Diane has a family connection to, having ancestors from the region, and she's got a, a map, and it's, it leads them to Whiskey Mountain. Okay, George, what's wrong? That's my synopsis. It's not motorcycles, it's dirt bikes. Yeah, dirt bikes were a big thing then, George. Yeah. Right up until I'm, then. Then Star Wars I, came well, out this, this year. This killed it, actually, kids, this movie. Yeah, kids step away this, driving motorcycles and collecting Star Wars toys. This is the same year as Star yep. Wars. Just think that this, this might have shared year. like theater space <laughs> with Star Wars. 1977, um, I, At first, folks. I got to say, this opens up as a very Tim Hamilton movie. Because we are, uh, we just hear a lot of dirt bikes going, and yeah. there's a lot of ambient noise. There's some <laughs> right. dialogue which should have been redubbed and wasn't. And I was just like, I'm not. And I thought we were going to watch another of those movies that was just like it was gonna be like the dirt bikers, and it was just be like just <laughs> I was hoping like you know what people love watching dirt bikes. I know you were hoping because you looked for this. And this movie <laughs> took a sharp turn at some point. Uh, so. I, I was expecting something. There was something in the credits that really surprised me. Uh, and you probably know who this is. The music, there was a song, a big credit, right? It's it's based on a song, and the song is in the movie by the Charlie Daniels Band. Oh, that's right. I did see that, and I forgot to write that Which down. Which I was Damn like, it. wait a second. Is this going to be a real movie? Because I figured yeah. Charlie Daniels Band, they did Devil Went Down to Georgia, right? Yes, but a few years later, I think. Okay. Oh, this is before. I think. I'd have to look that up. Uh, uh, Miss Miss Lee, could you look that up? This is your producer, Miss Lee. The Charlie Daniels Band hit song "The Devil Went Down to Georgia" was released in May of 1979. The song was the band's biggest hit, reaching number three on the Billboard Hot 100. Do a little research before you record. Thank you, thank you, Miss Lee. Gosh dang it all, Miss Lee, why are you cursing so much? So they got they got Charlie Daniels Band before they were big. So this maybe makes Ooh, some sense. Maybe I can't play the new, the music clips. Usually I'm like, no one cares about this, but. Well, I think that was just the one song. I think that you like, like you actually told me in our texting beforehand that you identified um, some of the music on the score was reused from uh, the movie Mardi Gras Massacre. Which, I I, first that. off, I'm impressed you would have the recollection. <laughs> like, it's a I'm very, like, I, I weird would, sound. Hmm. It was weird sounds. Can you play movie. some of that music right here so we know what you're talking about? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like I have a choice. All right, that's good. So they the the ladies. Talk with their husbands about whether they're going to chicken out and doing something they're doing. It's a yeah. pointless conversation. Yeah, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the plot of this movie for a very long time. 
Yeah, because then they go. I'm to also just going to mention. Huh? Introduced to the two male leads, they're wearing full motorcycle helmets, which is never good for identifying them. Nope. And the two female leads are both blondes, just blonde ladies who I really couldn't tell apart until towards oh. the end of the movie. I could, yeah, I could tell apart. One was more blonde. That's true. And there wasn't a lot of close-ups. There's a lot of mid-level shots in this movie, so there yeah. wasn't even like we got a chance to study their face. But they go to an antique gun shop. Uh-huh. They're being very vague and. And they seem upset that they found one gun that was used in the Union, by the Union, don't they? Do you notice that? <laughs> yeah. one I gun thought so. And I, yeah, they're like, they're like, I don't like that. Because remind everybody, this is a North Carolina North film. Carolina. North Carolina, yeah, they home the Confederacy. Um, so they're looking for guns that say CSA, which means Confederate, oh, C, yeah, Confederate States yeah, of America. Because exactly. they were made they have to have a yep. in, in the South rather than from France and England. They explain yep. that's why they're worth money. And the yep. plot is this lady thinks her grandpa left a whole bunch in a cave where they surely wouldn't rust. And they'll be worth lots of money. <laughs> they find out, oh, well, here, here's George. Do you have, let me explain. They, they find a Confederate gun. What? It's it prominently mounted in the shop. Yeah. And it would sell for $2,000. So I was wondering if we're going to hear from. George's well, Tim, Confederate I'm corner. I'm glad you did this. I own, Tim, <laughs> Confederate I, I'll be currency drop corner. Hey. <laughs> George's current <laughs> Confederacy corner corner. George's current currency corner. Uh, I uh, almost didn't do this because I was kind of zoning out. I Up until this point in the movie, I still couldn't understand anybody's voices. Still waking up. But then I went back. I actually went back and looked this up. So, yes, they find the mint or actually – they call it perfect condition, the shopkeeper. Mm-hmm. He calls the, the musket he has on the wall, the CSA musket. It's got yeah. the CSA stamp for Confederate States of America. It is free. He would sell it for $2,000, which, you know, what $2,000 in 1977 is worth now, Tim? Uh, I'd say $5,000. No, $10,541.10. Wow. No wonder she was excited. Which, yeah, she gets excited, and there must have been a line of dialogue you and I both spaced out on because they yeah. look at each other and they go, $400,000. Oh, because there's so, like 400 guns that she thinks are hidden in oh, the cave. So she's 400 multiplying. guns or 200 guns? That's what I wrote. They think they're finding 400 guns, but I was zoning out too. It's possible because <laughs> this is the next bit of math. So the $400,000 in 1977, you want to guess how much that would be worth now, Tim? Oh, a million. Over. It's a million and a half. Two million one hundred eight thousand two hundred. I think I wrote nineteen dollars and fifty three cents. Ah, but the reason why it could be four hundred guns, but this line occurs afterwards. The dude with dark hair, whose name I never bothered learning, he says, uh, "What would you pay for a gun that was? uh, What would you say, non mint?" It was interesting to me because the guy definitely said not perfect. He said it was perfect condition, not mint condition. Never killed no northern uh, Yankee. Yeah, the Yankee mixed it up with the mint stuff. So if they, he would pay $1,000 for one that was not in perfect shape, and that would be worth $5,270, and it looks like 55 cents. Nice. And that has been your installment of Georgia's Current Currency Confederate Kerner. What I was saying is, are they worth more if that you could prove that one of them killed a, a northern Yankee? Probably. Yeah. Okay. If you could prove that one of them assassinated <laughs> Lincoln. Oh. <laughs> oh, brother. That was a pistol, George. It's a small yeah, pistol. But- that's what, what we think. There's a lot we don't know about history. <laughs> There's a lot. So the store owner wanted <clears> to know, where are you going to find these guns? And they're like, shh, quiet. We're talking about he the goes, guns. where'd you say you were going? I didn't, he says and walks <laughs> <I know>. out. <laughs> he says, smell, we also you, learned, smell you later. <laughs> and then he, he cropped us and right out of the uh, store. Right. You don't know it. They don't really draw attention to it. But Tim, you watch this on smell vision right? Right. <laughs> yeah. It, it still was, exists. Yep, instructed which sticker to scratch off on my sheet from Whiskey Mountain. Oh, by the way, they explain why it's called Whiskey Mountain. Uh, later or right now? In this scene. So about this scene. So they're going – they have the map. It's called Whiskey Mountain because apparently in addition to saving, saving 200 to 400 Confederate muskets there, um, they also um, supposedly hit a lot of whiskey. All right. And we should also mention this. Whiskey Mountain is not a place you can actually find on a map except for hers. It's viewed as a uh, a tall tale. People seem to get really mad in this area when right. you suggest it. It's like mentioning like the uh, 
like the monster, the creature from Black Lake, and they Black keep saying Lake it or, don't exist. It's a myth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's whole, not like you can just go. A whole mountain. <laughs> that was Bill and Diane. They're the ones that have the map, and they have their two friends, Dan and Jamie. Just to keep it straight, four characters. I'm just going to call them by their hair color, which is <laughs> going to be a problem with the two blonde ladies. And then they stop at old store with old guys hanging out. But I didn't like these. But guys. you were no were, these guys. Although I did write, they're very, they're very Charles B. Pierce extras sort of yeah, characters. They weren't even reading the paper. They were talking about hanging nope. someone. If you noticed, they came in like yeah. Was like, and at this point, I wasn't laughing. really sure where the loyalties of this movie laid because there was that one weird like right. union thing. I'm like, is this going to be like, is this movie like going to be pro lynching or something fucked up like that? Yeah. Who knows? They didn't seem like they're from the city, but they also were like, yeah, these these locals, these, you know, they seem very uh, dismissive of them. Wait, like, who these, did he, the bad guys hit, at the gas station? No, the, our motorcycle riders are like, ah, these. These hillbillies. Well, they, they actually harass one of the blonde women. Yeah. She's sleeping in the car and the guys go out and just knock on the window, make faces. Yeah. One of the guys gets a prominent close up. He seems to be the leader. <clears throat> I also would dare say he's the only professional actor in the movie. Uh oh. And I'm like watching him. I'm like, who is this guy? And I'll share later when I recognized who he was. Oh, he's not. He's not Rudy, the leader. Or he's the leader. Rudy. Rudy yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna keep me in suspense. I didn't know his name. I know I don't I've remember seen any other him. names. Does he? Yeah, you definitely oh, have. Does he play the young Wookie on the Star Wars Christmas special? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, he's I got a little it. person. He, uh, he's a female. You know who played? You know who actually we have seen a movie that played the young Wookie in the Star Wars Christmas special? I think we did. Right. We yeah. did. She was. She was the female elf in Ernest Saves Christmas. Oh my God! I forgot. <laughs> Facts, people. <laughs> she. She played Lump a Rump Rump. <laughs> Chewbacca's child, lumpy for short. So our heroes take their station wagon, and they're 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 pulling their motorcycles. By the way, and they're going to go into the woods with their motorcycles or dirt bikes, as they may be, or dirt, or bikes. dirt bikes as they are. Yeah. And they say, "You're going to be riding them bikes in the woods." They're like, "Sure." I'm like, I don't know. Them mountain folks don't take kindly to that. And he's like, "Yeah." That was the first clue, goes, right? Yeah. <laughs> but up until this point, I was fully expecting. A Tim Hamilton, just scenes of people riding bikes in the And I'm like, wait oh, well, a second. I'm glad I surprised you. Because this yeah. gets me on my Did first you... list. Okay. But this, right. this is my first list, you know. That he tells them that those mountain folk don't take oh, kindly to that. Oh, oh, it's your first list. Oh, let's hear it, Tim. <laughs> it's a list of things mountain folk uh -huh. don't take kindly don't to in 1977. In 1977. Oh, because, of course, mountain folk <laughs> are always shifting their opinions they about are. things. Yeah. So... Things that mountain folk don't take kindly to in 1977. Number one, people telling uh, them they should see this new movie, Star Wars. Oh, man. I knew it was going to be Star Wars. Number two. God, anytime 77 comes up, it's always Star Wars this <laughs> and Star Wars that. People telling them that they're pretty sure there's going to be another one of them Star Wars movies. God damn it. And number three, people telling them and reminding them that the Beverly Hillbillies got canceled six years ago. There you go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they hated uh, 1977 yeah you know what what i might be a hill person from 1977 because <laughs> i hated all that too yeah. really <laughs> yeah who was telling you to see star wars uh who was I, pressuring Tim, you what i was like two years old i didn't i didn't see star wars in theaters i was too young <laughs> your older brother's like you got to see this movie I don't have an older brother. <laughs> so next, what I have written, by the way, I'm not sure what you're going to say about it, but they're camping and they hear a bird. And Bill says, oh, that's just Odin, love god of the mountain. Yep. And I'm like, well, <laughs> where I, did that come yeah, from? Yeah, that, that was just a weird aside that I wrote down, too. There was something I wrote before, too, where somebody said, mother fuck. I don't know what. Uh, He's never even read Odin one issue of Thor. Thor comic, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, like, yeah, I mean, Lord, okay, we all know that the Norse god of the mountains is Skadi. She's also the god of skis. Of course. She's all married to, know. yeah, everybody knows that. That's just the thing they teach you. And she's married to Njord, the god of the sea. But there is theirs is a loveless marriage. So nothing about this is appropriate. <laughs> um, I actually don't think, Tim, that's a bird, though. Uh-oh. I think that's our first sign of the mountain people. Oh, you think so? I thought so. Huh, I didn't think of that. I didn't think this movie uh, was that maybe. good. 
<laughs> I didn't. <laughs> it might not be. Because so don't we, at this point we actually start seeing, we actually start seeing, we get like the, 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 we get the creeper eyes view. There's somebody following them. Yeah, that was actually the only well done scene in the movie because they back up their camping and the camera goes back into the woods where it gets darker and darker. Yep. And then a figure just walks in front of the camera. I was like, oh. Yeah, that like, I, that's about this time, which is what made me think it was the bird. The bird was uh, that person. But that was like the only nice it, shot in the movie. There was a couple things that I could say. There was a scene that was really gross later that I thought was handled in a way that was interesting. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll give it credit maybe when we get up to it. <laughs> um, they come up to a bridge the next day. Oh, wait. First, there's a, oh, a fire in the campsite, up. right? The forest is on fire. Yeah, and their camp's burning. And Diane's like, where's my panties? Where's my panties? Because she's always losing her panties first thing in the morning. We'll get to that. <laughs> But yeah, there's a fire. I want, everyone, I want everyone to know that is actually a plot point in this it movie. Is. Tim's not, and not at this point. I don't think she's not losing her panties no. yet. But this is a major plot point in the movie that she loses her panties. But the place the forest is on fire. Yeah, and I don't know where the car went at this point because at that point I was a little confused. I'm like, well, where's your car? Is your car like on fire? But I guess they. I think they left. I, I think they had actually left the car a while ago and had biked further into the woods. They biked. Yeah, here's some biking music. Yeah, I recorded. Yeah, there was some biking banjo. There was a lot of riding bike in the woods. Probably more than yep. George wanted, but. <laughs> no, it's not as bad as a typical one of these films where it's just like the filmmaker thinks we're endlessly interested in dirt biking, and then there's like. <laughs> 10 minute montages with no dub dialogue of like just people riding right. dirt bikes. There's a lot of dirt bike riding, but it mostly gets the characters from place to place or set scenes. Yep. Cause they get to some water. But I did, there. I did take some walks oh. during some of the, I, I like oh, yeah. walked around my apartment <laughs> during some, like I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> so did you, they, you saw him get to the waterfalls though? Yep. Okay. They frolic, the girls they frolic go, in the water and they splash each other. Just they, like they, they get did in, in 1977. Yes. Yep. Is this a list? No, no, I'm just, I just noticed, okay. like, oh, the girls got to get in the water and splash each other. Was this before or after they come to the river where the bridge is out? Yeah, we're not there yet. Because no? they, they sleep by the waterfall. And that's why okay. I wanted to bring up that when Diane wakes up in the morning, it's, it's kind of darkish, but it's first thing in the morning. Diane opens her eyes and she's uh -huh. like, where's my panties? Who no, wakes that up? doesn't happen. Yes, oh. at the waterfalls. But I'm just saying, who wakes up? You're right. I asked Miss Lee, like, no, I'm not looking for my panties the moment I wake up. First, I have to pee or, you know, now TMI, I know, but some, some. I'm going to give some information. I'm going to give some mitigating information here. I can't believe I'm taking the side of the movie. Oh. They are camping in outside with their friends, like hmm. right there next to them. Two couples. The reason her panties were taken off is because the two blonde ladies had gone swimming in their underpants and they left them to dry. And okay. we see a hand grab the panties. So yes. we know somebody took them. Somebody took them. She's not just going to hop out and go pee because then the blonde guy will see her and go, like, I can see a pee. I okay. see a butt. I see a bits. I see a <laughs> peeing. So she's looking for just to cover herself. I think they, at least these guys were swingers. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, well, the next scene is they come to a bridge. Wait, George. Which is, George. oh, what? You're not getting away that easy. It's my second. Oh. I had two lists. Ah. <laughs> List of reasons why Diane checks and knows her panties are missing. <laughs> First thing is sunrise. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. George is starting to sweat. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's crying. I'm Dan, waiting. Dan, ja Jamie's guy, the other couple, he told her that a muskrat stole her panties once, and she's been on the lookout uh -huh. for that animal ever since. Uh, this is uh, Shades of Your Prince Charles and His Mongoose Obsession <laughs> no, Stealing no, no, Zipplers. No. I two, think you're going to recycle jokes with different animals. These panties, uh, number two, these panties were uh -huh. special as Dan was always hiding them from the muskrat. Okay. Dan, the uh -huh. guy and the other couple, not her husband, not her the boyfriend. The other couple, not yeah. her. Okay. All right. Weird. Number three, Weird. her horoscope uh -huh. that week told her to watch out for a hippie named muskrat who would steal something of hers that Dan was always sniffing. Too much. Too much word salad there. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> Wait, so I get it. You're suggesting that Dan <laughs> stole the panties to be a panty sniffer. Possibly. 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 And Dan, audience, just remind listeners, 
our audience is smart. They put all the pieces together. I put the, yeah. And just remind everybody, Dan is not the guy she's relationship with because, of course, <laughs> it is perfectly acceptable, nay, even expected to grab your partner's <laughs> panties and or undergarments and sniff them heartily whenever you can. Yes. Our right, audience Tim? is smart enough to put yep. the pieces together. Yeah. Our audience is smart enough to turn on lift, the podcast right now and go listen to me Hit on Stuff stop. to Blow Your Mind, airing today elsewhere. Stuff to Blow Your Mind. All right. Uh, all right. So now. So now. Now. Stop laughing at that list. Let's go on. They get to the bridge, which is out. George and Lowe. so what they do, it's just a rope across with like a. Uh, like oh. A, like, yeah. A yeah. ferry. A ferry. Yeah. Where more they have myth- to kind more of, mythology, George. First Odin. More mythology. Well, now a ooh, fairy. Oh, you oh. pay the ferryman. Oh, my God. That is an Odin reference. You're right. Wait. Why do you know that myth? Well, everybody knows that. Wait. Really? Are we talking about the River Styx? That one? No, no. Okay, there's one where Odin is in disguise and refuses to ferry Thor across. I thought you were oh, talking about that. Yeah. He says that I know that one. He says to Thor, "Bring me some panties, so I may and he's, sniff of them." And Thor goes, "I can't because <laughs> my muscles are too Thor." <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> wow. So they need it's got it's two guidelines across. You got to use this these logs slashed together as a form of raft to kind of ferry yourself across. Take turns. First goes yeah. First goes across guy with dark hair and blonde girlfriend. It's, they it's, get across with their bikes. It's Dan. And, yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm I wrote sure them down. Dan was the. Oh. I think you said Dan was the other one before. Let's just refer to their hair colors. We're gonna mess this up, Bill. Tim. Because Bill says this is odd. He's like, oh my god. Uh-huh. She's like, what? They don't have their helmets on. He's like, but they're halfway across the river. He's like, put your helmets on. I'm like, what? What's? But you know why? Probably oh, I think th- to hide stunt people. Uh, hide the stump people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the water. when the while the blonde guy and the other blonde lady are going across, we see a hand reach out and cut through the rope. Yep. And so their the raft breaks on. Well, they fall into the water, yep. and the one blonde lady it was established before, and she can't swim. Even though we did see her frolicking in a swimming hole just scenes yes. before. <laughs> Um, and so the so, guy with the dark hair is running on the opposite shore and he saves her and they're, they're all wearing helmets cause yeah, yeah stunt people. And the blonde guy gets up himself and she hugs the guy with dark hair in a weird way that I thought like they were going to maybe establish there was an awkward uh, I didn't thing notice that. I, I, and honestly, I actually wrote down cause I, at this point I still couldn't tell the characters apart. I'm like, I think <laughs> she might be hugging the guy who is not her boyfriend a yeah, little bit too much. Cause the other boyfriend was like, Ugh. He's getting out of the water. He was watching the yeah, other useless, so. motorcycle go down the river. Is it? it the was, motorcycle goes there and it's gone. It's gone. God. It becomes property of Odin, the god of mountain bikes. Uh, the god of uh, mountain bike loving. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so they're on the bikes again. So, More music. Well, they're on only three bikes now because they mm-hmm. lost one. Mm-hmm. Wait. Yeah, they lost one. I think they all had one yeah, bike. Yeah, why did they, lo- they only lose one? Why didn't they lose two? Mm, yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, yeah, we weren't paying enough attention, folks. <laughs> so they come up to a big mill. Oh yeah, I love the mill. Yeah, it's I know you love this mill. Cause... Crazy old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Tim, we haven't done this for a while, but I wrote in my notes they run into a Jack Elam. <laughs> they too, Tim. Oh my god. <laughs> On the Jack Elam scale, can you first off explain to listeners, because it's been a while since we've done this, can you explain oh. what the Jack Elam scale is and then rate this gentleman on the Jack Elam scale? Uh, what was it? One to five? Uh, oh, my God. I forget. So it was so one to five. Jack Elam is an actor who you may or may not know, oh, well, but you've know. definitely seen him. He has eyes that go different directions. It was reduced. We, we, we we're never sure what happened. It was maybe from an old pencil fight, maybe <laughs> yes. from a war. We don't know. But he played like every Shoot. hillbilly and hobo in like every old 70s, 80s movies. Apparently, yeah. from what I learned when I was on the podcast, Stuff to Blow Your Mind, he was in a lot of Charles B. Pierce films. That's what they oh, told me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Boggy Creek. But I don't know what other ones. We'll have to check them out. I don't remember him being in Boggy Creek, I'll be honest. Yeah, he's the guy in the woods. That no. Took the guy to the hospital. That's Creature of Black Lake. Yeah, Creature sorry, of Black Lake. Sorry. They're all yeah. a jumble. Not Charles B. Pierce. A yeah, jumble all, in my head. Knows? Let's call this out. Cut it off. Um, so, and he plays, he specializes in playing crazy old men. And mm-hmm. Tim was very enamored with this guy. So he in that initiated the Jack Elam scale where you would – I think it was one to five. One being someone who was not old or crazy and had normal eyes yeah. and five being someone old and crazy with crazy eyes. It was definitely a four. In your opinion. Yeah. Oh, I think he was a full-on five. Yeah. I or thought, can only Jack Elam be a five? I think only Jack can be five. 
Okay. This guy's like a 4.5 <laughs> though. He is. He uh, can't form sentences. He's always just asking about the ocean. I think he says ocean. Yeah, I, How big is ocean? Well, he acts all crazy. They, they like jumps out, scares one of the girls. Turns out he's, this guy's got her panties. He's got panties. <laughs> and the, she goes, I told you he stole my panties. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, we have to get out of here. And like the guy's like, surprisingly, like, even I, who am not like a particularly alpha guy, like yeah. driven by <laughs> testosterone, if I ran across a crazy cackling old man in the woods who stole my girlfriend's panties, <laughs> yeah, I'd beat the crap out of him. I mean, Would it's you, weird. They're just going to leave. Pathetic. His hair is well, sticking out everywhere. He's a little so old man. Mine. So am I. <laughs> he says, have you seen the ocean? They go, what? <laughs> How big is it? Bigger than these mountains. And he goes, do you want to see fish? And then they also say something that makes no sense to me. He just might be. Right. Too crazy to be dangerous. <laughs> like, how does that work? <laughs> I, I don't know that that's true ever. Yeah. I don't think you could be so crazy you're not dangerous. And spoilers, this guy does turn out to be dangerous. <laughs> just, that's like Grimace. So he, old man takes him to, uh, he set up a uh, like a salmon trap in a nearby lake They or a river. They yeah. get some fish. But those were his fish. Pet, those, nice time. those were his pet fish. He just says oh, fish. No, that's sad. That they, explains they just his say, actions Let's later. eat them. <laughs> Yeah, they, they were his like, pets. Oh no! Oh no! They were his lover. <laughs> they were, they named them all: Crazy Larry and Silly oh, Katie. Oh, what list? Jelly Jeff? Uh-huh. No, Stinky Jelly, Ringo. Jelly Jeff. Diamond Dirk. Stinky Ringo. Oh. Diamond Dirk. What else? What else? Albert Not in a Can. Josie Legs. Was there one called Albert Fish? Yeah. Albert Not in a Can. <laughs> Christy Pants. Like Slippery Joe. Christy Pants. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a lot to say Jones. about this old man. Yeah. I'm sorry, Shirtless Tim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I have a list. I forgot. I have another list. Oh, I'm so sorry. Today. So All sorry. Right, I'm leaving. Right. Why was the old man asking about the ocean, George? Why? Because uh, of fish. <laughs> now he wanted to go to the ocean, put his ear mm-hmm. to a seashell, and hear the ocean rather than the voices in his head. All right. That kind of works. Uh, number two, the voices in his head told yep. him that the ocean is where mermaids live. Uh-huh. And number three, he wanted and to go to the ocean to, to meet a mermaid and steal her panties. To fuck it. No. <laughs> so, ah, ah, nice. Okay. He's a panty snipper, Tim, George. I, I want to, to challenge you to draw how panties would fit over a, a, a creature with the bottom half of a fish. Hey, I thought of that while I was writing it. <laughs> Maybe it just sits on the fluke of the tail. <laughs> where's, where's the mother head? Like that uh, Japanese uh, weird fetish thing. Why does it got to be Japanese? Who's that character? No, this is a Japanese superhero man. He wears panties on his head. You never saw this? I'm not lying. No. No. I forget what he's called. All right. Panty head man? All right. I'll Folks, send it. if you know what Japanese <laughs> know. character wears panties on his head, write into us. It's Seti Bimko the at the gmail.com. Our listeners know. All right. <clears throat> so, so they get on the bike. There's banjo music. Oh, he laughs, though. I got his laugh here. Oh, oh. <laughs> I got it. You hear that, people? Yeah, nice. That's what they. That's his response when they ask him if he's heard of Whiskey Mountain. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, like I got to get whoever this actor was, this Jack Elam light. I got to give this guy credit for turning in a performance. He did. He was not shy. I mean, one might say he overacted terribly, but at least he was really bringing the energy. And like to this guy, I salute you. Yep. Yep. I salute Our him. heroes get on their bikes, three bikes now. They tootle off to some banjo music. They come up to an abandoned cabin. Having not learned the lesson, they knock no. on the door. These nope. people, even if, you know, even if it wasn't the South, you don't, you don't just ride around the woods knocking on people's houses. No. <laughs> I mean, especially like if you're in like a remote area, you're like, okay, worst case scenario, there's somebody who's living there and they're going to be fucking terrified. Yeah. I mean, there's no situation where somebody who lives in the middle of the woods and be happy that a, like a four people <laughs> on dirt bikes come rubbing up to their house and they're knocking on the door. Yes. You're going to get shot or attacked by a dog yeah. or maybe a Boggy Creek monster or. Yeah. Yeah. But no one's there. I don't remember. Nothing happens in this place, right? No, no, nobody's there. They just suddenly find the cave that the map said. They're like, here it is. Whiskey yep. Mountain. Which up until this point, I had no idea they're looking for a cave. Did you? 
Not really. I thought they were looking for a mountain. I was like, they're like, it's beautiful. And they're like, we're all going to be rich. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the two guys go in and they tell the two ladies to go outside just in case something happens. And bats. They're like, oh, you don't remember that. Yeah, you don't remember that? That was so in, like nah. insulting. Like, and there's bats. And the girl's like, ew, okay, we'll wait oh, out really? here. Yeah. It's like that? Oh. Yeah, just like that. Like that, George. All right. They find bags filled with pot, so. <laughs> so much weed. <laughs> it's not stored very well. I don't know how you store no. weed, but. <laughs> I feel like if you, first off, Tim is lying. He knows exactly how to store <laughs> weed, everybody. <laughs> Second off, I don't think you're having burlap sacks worth like just stuffed with green weed hanging out in a cave in a that's like cave. got a waterfall over the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be moldy in like two seconds. <laughs> so the guys from the store, they're in the cave and they got guns. Yep. And this is when I realized who the guy was. Tim. Yeah, tell me. All right. Have you ever seen the classic nineteen eighty nine movie Adventures in Babysitting? Oh yeah. Oh, is he the you bad guy? He's the bad guy from that movie. Like, oh, it always stood out to me so much. Like, when they oh. go into the place, there's the one playboy that ha- it looks like Elizabeth Shue is doing the centerfold. So it's like a plot point uh, in the movie. Huh. And there's these – I think if they're drug dealers in that movie or weapon dealers or something, all these codes are written on this thing. And he spends the whole movie trying to get it back right, from right. Elizabeth Shue. And as a kid – just to be a super nerd here, because this is also the movie where Vincent D'Onofrio plays Thor. Uh, Thor. Yep. I always thought that that guy was supposed to be Loki. I thought oh. he would have been a good Loki. Uh, the Loki TV yep. show we're talking about. Well, no, not Loki the TV. Like Loki the way he was envisioned in comics. When we read oh, comics oh, as kids, oh, oh, oh. everyone see. Loki wasn't no hot Tom Hiddleston. He was a gnarled looking old dude. Like I this see. guy would have been a good Loki back then. I see. I thought you meant in the multiverse. He was, you know, we're going to see him. No, I think, I think unfortunately this actor has passed away. And uh, Adventures in Babysitting would be part of the Marvel multiverse. It is actually because it is a Disney film. So, yeah. He's Thor in that universe. Yep. He, and Vincent D'Onofrio is both Thor and the Kingpin. So that's going to be tricky. Is that him? Yeah, oh. that's him as the Kingpin. I didn't put that together oh, yeah, no. in my head. Yep. Oh, my wow. God. Everybody, Tim, Tim is just <laughs> trashing his studio. He's on a rampage. <laughs> Why did no one tell me? (laughs) (laughs) Miss Lee, you had one job. I always want to be informed who Vince Zinafio was playing in any given project. (laughs) Yep. So uh, they 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 are like, we don't want to cause trouble with you. We aren't interested in the drugs. And to his credit, what's this bad guy's name? You said his name before. It's called Mr. Rudy. Mr. Rudy? I thought it was Rooney. He's like, he's like, why didn't you tell me you're just looking for these guns? Because he doesn't want to hurt no. these guys. He's the only, there's like, only one with brains. Any brains. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's like, yeah, he's he's the criminal mastermind, and he's just a normal guy who isn't like a complete monster like no. everyone else he's allied with. We're all like fucking just <laughs> deliverance people. They're deliverance people. I told you to make me tea. <laughs> Clevis, not fill the car. Clevis, I told you to make me T. That's why I was sticking the big crossbar on you, so you looked like the letter T. That's not what I meant. Yeah, they're all stupid. Uh, oh yeah, they. He's like, draw the drapes while I'm gone, and then one of them, then Hillbillies <laughs> gets out of a drawing pad and draws a picture of the drapes. Yep. It's hilarious. It's yeah, hilarious. It's a, nothing like good Amelia Amelia humor before. <laughs> What's about to happen in this movie happens. Oh. He, he says, go, "Go, go, dig some graves for these, these guys." But of course, the women. Which, yeah. Weirdly, he doesn't even say he's going to kill them at first because he takes no. the guys and ties them up in the cave, and he leaves the women behind when he does this. And this is what I couldn't believe this part. Now, and this is I did take a walk during this, so I missed a lot of what's maybe happening this bit. Okay. The uh, various other rednecks um, rape the women. Yeah. And, and this is the scene I was alluding to that I thought was actually filmed in an interesting way, but it was just kind of – it went on for really long, so I left. But they would do this thing. Like as they're doing it, they were um, taking Polaroids of them. Yes. I was going to say, so, at least we didn't have to watch the rape. They just kind of took these pictures. But it was still very upsetting. We hear was, everything yeah, happening. Yeah. And the screen keeps going white, and we hear the Polaroid noise. And then you would see a Polaroid picture that gradually comes into focus as we see these women being brutalized. And it was – it was very effective, honestly, and it yeah. was like mm-hmm. well done, I guess. But it was upsetting, and like I took a walk. Yeah. Um, and, and I went. I was gone pretty long. 
Oh, okay. And I came back, and I guess the scene went on pretty long. Because, yeah. like, he's just coming back in the house, Rooney, after leaving the guys tied up. And they're all And he sees out. what they've done. Yeah, and they're all like, and the women are laying there, like, they have no clothes on. You don't mm-hmm. see anything, luckily. But, like, one of them's catatonic. Yes. And, and like, he, he, he slams the door, and he's yelling at the guys. And he's like, well, now we have to kill them all. That's when he tells them to build the graves. Ah, uh, okay. Uh-huh. And I do have to point out, Polaroids are fa- yep. fairly new. Now, these are, Were they? Yeah. But these are hillbillies who don't even have... Uh, we got nothing. And when they show one one of them how to ride a motorcycle, he's like, and then you got to turn the key and the, the, you got to put the brakes up here and you got to put the gas. You hear, he had to just explain what a, a motorcycle was to these guys. So how do they have a Polaroid and know how to work it? Sorry. Just, well, Tim, I, I just looked up Polaroid and the first camera and film went on sale in 1948 in a department store in Boston. <sighs> but it was popularized in the 70s. Yeah, I don't know. I, okay, so maybe that's weird. That is weird. Um, okay. <laughs> Someone told um, him he had to buy one of those to see that their new Star Wars picture. He wanted to take some Polaroids. Then they're aliens. I have to make a point to myself to stop choosing. <laughs> make sure I never choose a movie 77 so we don't ever have this happen again. Um, all seems lost. The guys are building graves. Two of the guys take building. the bikes and has this building graves. <laughs> The scene that Tim mentioned where they don't know how to use the vehicle in their training. Like one guy didn't even know which, how to put on a helmet. No. Like that's actually a scene. He's like, you put on wrong, dummy. But then. <laughs> trying to put it on his foot. Our friend Jack Elam. Yep. Who we, we learn now he was maybe the guy who cut the bridge because this was the same knife. He walks in and he's got a knife. And you're like, oh, no, is he going to stab the guys tied yeah. up in the cave? Or is he going to save him? And he, you know, acts giggly and stuff. He says, cut, and cut, cut. That's what he says. And then the director cuts and the movie yeah. ended. And they're like, they turn it back on like, guys. That's what he was what, saying. You have to wait till I say it. I didn't know that he was saying that. That's funny. Oh, you he, walked he away again. He cuts the rope. No, I just wasn't paying He just it. says, cut, cut. And he gets closer to them and he cuts the rope and not them. Okay. It's meant to be a scene of menace. And then he went and sat down and he started cutting out the lock horns from the newspaper because he was like keeping, yep. saving them, gluing, gluing them into a scrapbook. He's a big okay. Leroy fan. Yeah. Leroy Lockhorn. Sorry. You just told uh, me to stop making fun of him. <laughs> He was cut, I'm just saying he, he was, was cutting out Carter's crew. Carter's crew was a funny comic. Uh, do you remember, Tim? <laughs> I've been meaning to ask you this. Do you remember there was a comic strip called Boner's Ark? I do. What, you remember that? What one? a weird. Is that that's still around? No, I remember a few years ago. I looked it up. I'm like, I can't. I just had this memory of like there was an art. There was a thing called Boner's Ark. I remember there was a dinosaur on it. It was all, <laughs> and the joke was. Was this guy Boner made an arc, but I remember he only got one of each animal because he was apparently an idiot. Even though he was Uh-oh. named after an erection, he didn't know how sex <laughs> happened. And it was just – I think it was by Mort Walker actually. Wow. We could make fun of Mort Walker. Was it all right? male animals? Dead. No, because there female. was a little pig. I remember there was a pig that wore a bikini. So it was all female? And also – and Boner had a wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually Tim. I'm excited. Let's start talking about Boner's Ark instead okay. of the Lockhorns. <laughs> Back to the movie. Our two heroes uh, they encounter the guys who stole their their dirt bikes. Yep. One of them uses a big stick. The other one punches them they beat these guys up they take it steal the motorcycles they start back. racing to they steal the motorcycles back they're racing to freedom and I walked away for a bit here but uh, somehow Rooney and the other guy are in a jeep they're chasing with guns Rudy. Chasing him with guns, shooting at him, and, and they've already s- wired a bridge to explode with dynamite. Yeah, that, that didn't make much sense to me either. It did. Okay, I wasn't sure why that happened. Uh, so, guy with uh, the blonde guy zips across real quick. He's okay. The guy with dark hair, the bridge explodes. Rooney yep. runs over and blows up the bridge. And uh, and blonde guy's like, you gotta jump! <laughs> and the guy with dark hair's like, I can't! And <laughs> He zips around, and here comes Rooney and the other guy, and they're shooting at him point blank range and missing, and he turns around in a cornfield. He comes zipping back fast as he can over the remnants of this mm-hmm. bridge. Tim, wouldn't you know it? He there's, make that jump. There's a ramp there, yep. There's a ramp. There's a hidden ramp. That <laughs> often occurs in these movies, actually. Our action scene. Uh, it was pretty exciting. I mean, it's a good – yeah, it's a good stuff. It's okay. Ish. Again, helmets. Yeah, the dynamite was impressive, too. Did they, they, did they put their helmets on? Yeah. Except to hide the stunt. Because <laughs> if you're running for your, from your life from some guys with guns, I wouldn't bother with the helmet. I, mm. 
How well, I, I did. What? How soon after they get the motorcycles from the guys do they put that? Do they start getting chased by Rooney and the other guy? Right away, I think. Hmm. And I was like, "You're just going to leave? I thought you'd like to save your. I don't know if your your women are in danger, like imminent danger. You're just going to run." But, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what they do is they run into town. They go to the sheriff. And this is, I mean, I mentioned before there was some real Charles B. Pierce, right? Extras oh, yeah. looking like they, these fucking goobers that they <laughs> dug up. Yes. Good Lord. I love them. I love the deputy. What, the de- can, deputy. Do you want to say anything about the de- deputy? I, 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 he's just a, shriv- sure, sure. He's a yeah, shriveled funny. up uh, leather sack. That's why I say about yeah, the deputy. Yeah, he looks like he, <laughs> he won't help him. <laughs> he looks like a dried apricot if it was a human being. <laughs> and of course, the sheriff comes out and you know right away because the sheriff's like, eh. Whiskey Mountain, that's a myth. It's just like just like Odin in the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the love god of the mountains. Stupid question. He won't Tim. help him Maybe anyway. was he part of the deal? Yeah, he was. Was he working with the criminals? Oh, of course. Okay, that's yeah. He's just like, yeah, okay. yeah. We ain't got no marijuana right. out in these air hills. Yeah. We ain't got no pant- so, panty sniffers. You just go on back. Like, and- you boys don't <laughs> <laughs> got no panty sniffers. <laughs> that's what he said. So they, true, yes. they go to the gun store. After he admonishes him, now y'all don't be taking the law into your own hands, you hear? Right. Watch. But they uh, okay. start buying guns. and Sheriff, well, he, you know he's he Sheriff's part of it because he calls the gun guy and says, don't be selling them no guns. Remember? Well, that's what I was wondering. Like, like it, it could have been that he was part of the drug deal or it could have been that he was just not wanting to have a bunch of guys go buy guns and shoot up his town. I don't know. Yeah, because it almost turns into Rambo. They walk out the door like, there's one of them coming now and shoots his pickup truck and it, it, like rolls over, <laughs> right? Well, before you, uh, before you do that, Tim, I do want to say there was a, there's a current currency kerner here. George's current currency kerner. Oh, for buying guns. Yeah. Without so the sheriff hops on the fine phone with the, the guy because like, first the guy's going to sell him the guns, no problem. And he's like, look, tell them you, there's like they need licenses or something, which, of course, everybody knows in the South. That's laughable. <laughs> but so the guy, the gun owner, the gun store owner is like, sorry, gentlemen, I can't say them guns. And our guy at the dark here cocks his gun, points it right at him. And he goes, get on the floor. Yeah. And he takes out three hundred dollars, oh. waggles them above his head and says, this this here is enough. To take to cover anything we're getting, these two guns and all this ammo, yeah. and then they leave and apparently shoot a pickup truck <laughs> and and these curtains <clears throat> and these curtains. It goes in. and also this little hat, yes, and this little keychain, this keychain where you pull the trigger and the lady's skirt falls down. I'm taking this too, yes, and also this this box of chaw, Ooh. which you might call chewing tobacco. Also these and also some matches. We're going to use the bathroom in a public restroom, <laughs> and I don't want to leave an unsightly smell and an unsightly smell, <laughs> yes, unsightly smell. And these here donuts to bribe the, sh- <laughs> to bribe the deputy with. Anyway. Give me them panties. Give me the <laughs> panties. I want to sniff them panties. So do you want to know, like, this may seem like a lot for $300, Tim, but do you want to know what $300 is worth now? A thousand. Got More. $1,581.16. I'll be right someday. That guy pulled out like $1,500 <laughs> and just like threw it on the floor like, I'm taking your gun. Yeah. They, so they were rich city folks. Cue the banjo music. They zip back. I left the room for a bit. So if anything happened, I don't know what happened. But then they come back. Oh, you missed a lot of motorcycle Jackie. riding. <laughs> I know. I could tell. I was like, well, I'm just going to leave. Oh, I have to point this out, people. Yep. In this movie, they drive into the woods. They ride their motorcycles. They hike. They're in the woods for like two days. And then they're finally like, oh, we found the mountain. And after Rudy uh, takes some prisoner there at the mountain, and they mm-hmm. run away. It's just like, oh, down a dirt road and run a highway. You're <laughs> so right. That, that map was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, on the way back, they, they run up and they see their friend, Jack Elam, too, who was sitting on the same oh, same sitting in a chair. He was sitting on before. He used, yeah, to pet, was a chair. Those... he used to play with his pet fish there, but they were all eaten. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he was alone. And I was shocked what happens here. Yeah, I expected that. Come on. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. He'd already been proven to be on their side. He's cackling like a lunatic. Mm-hmm. We've been told he's so crazy. He's not dangerous. <laughs> he's not dangerous. He fucking slow motion blow aways the blonde guy. Right. <laughs> Blows him away. <laughs> Dan. And then, Shoots Dan. 
Dan, no, I don't know who. I, I'm never gonna learn the names. I mean, and the guy with dark hair shoots the old man. Sorry, Bill. He falls over. I think he was on a bucket. <coughs> yeah, see, you can't. You don't know either. <laughs> so it's such a weird thing, and then the blonde guy dies. Yep, he's dead. Somebody's like, gotta we went die. This whole thing. Yeah, well, why not have him dying fighting like the fucking eight rednecks? Uh, yeah. Well, this is shocking. This is artistic. Come on. It was. It was slow motion. So it, it was, was slow artistic. Motion. So now it's up to our hero, who now we realize has always been the guy with dark hair. And the blonde guy just is a weird, he weird just, hanger on this whole time. He, he grabs his gun. He just turns into he Rambo. He rides off. He does. And he, <laughs> Stupidly. He shows up at the at the cabin where the guys are. He holds both guns aloft at once. He yells, <laughs> Rudy! <laughs> Gets involved in a fucking shootout. Stabbing people, shooting people. He did stab one. One guy ran right at him with the gun, shooting him. <laughs> remember? And when he got close, he just stabbed him. <laughs> I don't remember this. So if I, I don't write, I need to write more of these details down because I don't remember these specifics. It's okay. I do remember the part that was weird to me is that at the end, Rudy is the last one left. Who could have just left through the back of the thing and been fine? Yeah. He just kind of okay. comes out very like, like, hey, let's talk about this. And then they, he shoots Rudy too. So like weirdly, like I said – the final battle is super one sided with the one guy killing like six of these yeah. fucking redneck dudes. Yep. And the only one on the good guy team who had been killed at this point is the blonde guy getting sucker shot <laughs> by the old, old hermit. It was an odd choice. Maybe he had prayed to Odin before he went to, you know, end oh, of battle. What is Odin the mountain god of this time? <laughs> the mountain god of the mountain war, god of not I guess. Getting shot. Okay. Well, yep. <laughs> wow. He finally got what Odin is god of correctly. <laughs> He goes into the um, he goes into the the cabin. Yeah, and he his his blonde girlfriend runs up and hugs him, and, like, and the other blonde lady. It's like, where's Dan? She runs up. Or where's Bill? Or Bill? Or where's Bill? Bob? Or <laughs> where's Bill. the blonde guy? That's my boyfriend. <laughs> and he just looks at her and is like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he did. like weird. He like, still couldn't I find like your panties. Like, <laughs> Oh no! We can't make jokes about her panties. She's <laughs> naked. Oh no, she's not naked at this point still. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Like five still... minutes of just her. Five minutes just of her face as she's just like uh, slowly coming apart. And they don't I'm comfort sure, her. Like, they hug each other. Yep. <laughs> she just sits there like her husband is dead. He's lying there like, like in probably being eaten by chipmunks as we speak, <laughs> and just like, and then they step outside, yeah. and as they're walking. They walk to the lake, which is like right there. All of a sudden, they right. notice like there's a helicopter coming up. I'm like, why aren't you I'm running? Like, why for this? I, I was like, why aren't you guys yeah. running? You just shot people in town. Yeah. There's bodies laying around, <laughs> and the helicopter pulls up, and we see it's the cop is in it, and yep. he's aiming a gun at them, and that's the way the movie ends. Freeze frame. Yep, pretty dark. That's what you got in the '70s. Sometimes a dark ending, at least in deliberate. Do you think the people got away? Like most of them, right? I forget if one died. Uh, I think they all I got think out. Ned Beatty dies. No, I think they all get out. Because think Christopher Walken dies. They, uh, forget because they have it's to explain. Christopher Walken in there. Is that... They have to explain dead bodies. I read that novel. That's a big part yeah. of the novel. At the end, they're like, "Well, why is the dead body in the?" And they're like, "Well, uh, he fell out of the canoe, and we told him not to read comic books." Well, uh, whatever. <laughs> That's a big part. Of it. That's in well, the movie too. They're like, "What about this dead body?" I don't remember that movie enough to remember. Uh, let me ask you about the movie we just watched. Oh, yeah. Do you think the cop shoots them? <laughs> Want to talk about that? Oh, yeah. They're dead. You do? Yeah. Why didn't they just go back in there? This guy just killed like eight dudes. He could take out two cops in a helicopter. Oh, yeah. That, that would have been a cool. Is this how your sequel yeah. starts? Should we talk about? Should have. Now they really, yeah, Oh, well, that's yeah. That's my new sequel ending. <laughs> wherever you are, wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. Revenge. Oh, who's most likely to appear on a game show from this movie? Yep. Who's most likely to appear on a game show called New Mexico or Old Mexico? Okay. Oh, I say the crazy the old man. Oh, the deputy. <laughs> Either one. Either one. Thanks. But you know what? what? Who would who would be on a game show <laughs> called New Mexico <laughs> or Old Mexico? Come on, the old crazy man. They would ask him. What, okay. what what brand of cigarettes was sold in old Mexico in 1844? Uh-huh. And he says, ocean, how big is ocean? He's like, right, it was uh-huh. called ocean. And he says, what was the first 
uh, movie slang used in New Mexico when they filmed uh, Never Say Quiet in 1911. And he says, cut, <laughs> cut. I'm like, right, cut. Right. That's the first movie term yep. used on the set. And he won. Fill in he the won. Blank. He won. If you teach a man to fish in New Mexico, you'll give him food for a day. If you give the man – oh, I said it wrong. Never mind. <laughs> he says fish. 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 Well, how about he this? The free this show. spinoff of Barney Miller <laughs> was probably uh. viewed by someone in New Mexico. <laughs> what was it called? Fish. <laughs> okay. There's our revenge story. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good one, George. Yeah, that was awful. Who wants to do their revenge stories? Revenge stories. I'm keeping them short. I hope you appreciate that. It's my new leaf. I am keeping them short. I turned over. Short revenge stories. You want to go first? Well, I'm going to go first if I may. You're worried. So I am worried. I I am going to start off. With unintentionally, I started the the revenge thing. So the sheriff is landing. Start the music. He picks up right afterwards. Oh, yeah. Here's the music. Sheriff is landing. He's got them in the sights. And our hero, dark-haired guy, looks up. And he sees the gun be leveled on him. And he's like, I don't want to be shot like this. So he pulls the blonde lady that he didn't bother comforting in front of him. And she absorbs all the shots from the sheriff. He dives back into the um, the cabin with his girlfriend or wife, or whatever the hell she was. Yeah. They return fire. While this is going on, in, a, in an unusual move, the camera starts panning away from the scene of this firefight. We mm-hmm. travel down the road a bit and we're kind of following along in this continuous shot. We see all these, like, kind of tracks on the road from, like, dirt bikes that went over. And we come to that bridge. Which one? The bridge that they jumped before. Oh, yeah? The one that was exploded by a dynamite. Mm-hmm. And we hear a muttering. There's something that's upset. And you know what? <laughs> Wouldn't you believe it, Tim? Sasquatch. There's a... No, a troll. A troll under the bridge. A troll of course. under the bridge, yeah. How could I say yeah. Sasquatch? How could you say Sasquatch? Probably because like 90% of movies have Sasquatches. Is, I, honestly, surprised this one didn't have a Sasquatch. Is he on Twitter? Is that why he's a troll? Huh? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you still got it. <laughs> and this troll comes out and he's like, I just don't get it. I spend years working on my bridge. Listen to the clip clop, clip clop of billy goats as they go over with their little hooves and their horns. Sometimes they eat the billy goats and sometimes they don't. But I'm just mm. minding my own business here in the woods. And suddenly, these motherfuckers blow up my house. Ooh. And he decides he's going to take revenge. Okay. But who does he blame? Rooney's dead. Yeah. Would the troll even know about Rooney? Rudy. Rudy. Oh, it's Rudy? Like the little Rudy. girl on the, Rudy's on the dead. Bill Cosby show. Like a, <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> so he does know. He gets the name Rudy because he goes back. He, he follows the sound of gunshots in the in the distance. And he comes across the scene, and it's a scene of carnage. The sheriff's dead. The deputy's dead. The helicopter crashed into an oil tanker. Both blonde ladies are dead. Laying there bleeding out is our hero. Oh, my God. And he come, this troll comes up, and he sees this creature right out of myth. Literally out of Norse mythology. And he's like, I knew I shouldn't have mentioned Odin. <laughs> the god of firefights in the middle of the woods <laughs> in North Carolina. And the troll gets up close to our bleeding out here and is like, who did this to my house? Who blew up my bridge? And with his final breath, our hero utters the words, Rudy. Uh-huh. Now, you were very clever to point out that this troll, even though this was the 1970s, was already on Usenet groups. <laughs> Some of these Usenet groups, owing to the magical nature of the troll, were able to peer into the future. He typed Rudy into his search engine, and he found the reference to a show called The Cosby Show. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you making this yep. up on the fly? <laughs> I, I, I got derailed very quickly. <laughs> and that, that troll, he, he, he smoothed his big hair down. He put on pants because remember in the 70s, trolls were like those little naked dolls and stuff. Yeah. And he travels to he travels to uh, Brooklyn, to Brooklyn Heights. And he waits for like seven or eight years for the Cosby Show to start. Ooh. And a lot of people don't realize this: the original actress playing Rudy was not <coughs> fill in that actor's name. Phil. <laughs> Bill. It was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And then he he eats the original actor. The end. Okay. Boom. Whoa. 
Whoa, whoa. Did you see Danny Kaye at all while there? Because Danny Kaye was on no, Bill he, Cosby. Danny Kaye was Danny Kaye was later. They had to like retool the show after the original Rudy. Rudy was originally a boy in that show. <laughs> oh my god! And they're like, well, I guess we'll give it to that guy's that other character that who played Rudy in the Cosby. Folks, I apologize. Look that up. I think she went on to be on other shows. Not, oh, totally something. I don't know. Was she Raven Simone? Raven, right? Raven, oh, totally Raven. Tim, is she Raven Simone? Because Ravens, Odin oh. has Ravens as his familiars. It, Tim, it all ties together. It's all ties together, folks. What this wow, tells God. you, this story tells you, all these references to Norse mythology. You got to go out buy my book, Odin, book one of the Asgardians. <laughs> go listen to my appearance and stuff to blow your mind. Turn this podcast off now. <laughs> Never hear Tim's thing. <laughs> So I'm doing I'm doing my story shorter, George. I'm doing the shorter. Yep, everybody, I hope it's okay. Everybody's clapping. <laughs> my revenge story. So in this movie, uh-huh. Diane was looking for her grandfather's map. Well, Diane had a sister, another granddaughter. Ooh. Was it Rebecca Howe? No, nope, her name was Misty. Misty. And she wondered what happened to her sister and her friends. They never came back from their trip. So she reads the map because she has a copy of the map. It's uh important of course. well it makes sense and she uh, reads it this is before xerox technology but yeah. you know. <laughs> she hand hand copied it <laughs> okay oh like a monk sense. yeah a monk on, on illuminated manuscripts it was, illum- it was on human skin because uh she didn't know how to make illuminated uh what was it made of uh parchment vellum oh i thought it was cow skins sometimes it was yeah well okay <laughs> back up shorter so, already she <laughs> She looks at the map, and she realized uh-huh. the original map has been water damaged. What it really says is Frisky Mountain, not Whiskey Mountain. The Mountain of Love, just like Bill said. He must have known something. So thus, Misty gets a gang of biker ladies together, uh, dirt bikes, and they head out to Frisky Mountain to see what happened oh, to her, you- sisty, her sister. What? <laughs> Misty Sisty. <laughs> So I'm their, their bike gang is called the Frisky Switchblades. Oh, you're not going to be able to say this. This is like a tongue <laughs> twister you're creating for yourself. Yes, the Frisky Switchblades. All right. Frisky also sees that the word they thought was musket was really smudged, and it really said puppets. So she realized, puppets. oh, in the cave is the famous puppets lost to history. The puppet of Lincoln and Davis and General Grant and God damn it. General Robert E. Lee and a little stage where they put on a play about how Lincoln was the pilot of a futuristic aeroplane, but that was going to be invented in North Carolina. But in this puppet uh-huh. show, every time he stepped into the plane, it had a low, low door top and his big stovetop hat would knock off and get knocked off. And then Lincoln would try to get into the cockpit and his big hat would hit the horizontal vertical stabilizer switches. And, you know, everybody laughed. It was a very funny puppet show. And then General uh-huh. Robert E. Lee would order this soup as the insight meal, in flight meal, but he'd get a bunch of split peas into his beard, and everybody would laugh. Interesting, yes. because like the uh, first flight wouldn't be in North Carolina in, in Kitty Hawk until years later in 1914. I said futuristic. Yep. It was a hit puppet show. <laughs> it was a hit okay. puppet show, and it would be worth millions uh-huh. if they found all the puppets and the sets. Thus, the misty switchblades find a tunnel indicated on their map. Uh, and in this tunnel, they see a box, an arc, if you will. And it's filled with illegal Star Wars knockoff toys because the movie just came out. And you know who's in there? It's Rudy. He survived. And he gave up the pot business. He's also got a business selling illegal Star Wars knockoff toys. Now, are these of actual <laughs> characters? Or are they kind of like is like Narf Dater and stuff? And like, no, they're the real ones. Oh wow! Okay, so they get ambushed by these guys. Uh huh. <clears throat> but this biking, Tim, this is so short. It is. It is very short. <laughs> <laughs> this biking is more than these hillbillies planned on. They came armed with uh-huh. switchblades hidden in their hair, and they kill them all, Ooh. especially Rudy, who is uh-huh. responsible for getting her sister Diane killed. She exacts her revenge. And there's another arc filled with toy prototypes for a sequel called The Empire Strikes Again. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the biker gang is going to open it. And uh, 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 what's her name? Swifty? Whisty? <laughs> Whiskey? Misty. Misty. <laughs> Why am I helping you tell your own long story? Misty says, Misty, don't yes. open that arc. It could melt your face off. Never mind. I'm going to leave that <laughs> out. <laughs> It doesn't happen. No, you have to. You have to. <laughs> they open it. It's just Misty, <laughs> honey, don't look at it. 
<laughs> Keep your eyes closed. But nothing happens. It's just a box of old Logan's Run toys that are worthless. Oh, no. Logan's Run. Wait, Tim, were these Logan Run toys at this point over six, 30 years old? Six inches tall. No, it came six out in 1976. Tall. Oh, you're right. I got confused. <laughs> got excited. So, they took their Star Wars toys and they made a million. The the the, the Switchblade sisters there. The... What is a million dollars worth <laughs> nowadays, Tim? I don't know. But I don't either. Not everything worked out for the best, as Misty could not forget about the possibility of those puppets that were still in the cave. She returned to look for them again and again, until some say she got lost in that cave because she misread the map and never returned. And some say that Odin, the mountain god of puppets, took her. Okay. The end. The sequel's called Misky Frisky Mountain. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I I thought so hard you were going to go with either like a play Misty for me or the Misty Mountains from like Tolkien. And he, she was going to become Gollum or something. That all went through my head. Why Misty? Misty Mountain Hop, the Led Zeppelin song. <clears throat> huh. Misty, the, 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 the mixed drink that came out in 1979. With a twist of lemon. <clears throat> I don't, is that really a drink? Yeah. What was the alcohol in it? Too much. Taken off the market. <laughs> it was taken. Oh, this was like a beverage. Yeah, beverage. I thought when you said misty, I thought you were meaning like like a cocktail, like a fuzzy well, co- navel. Co- or co- a cocktail sex came in a can. <clears throat> really? Yeah. They had cocktails in cans in the seventies. Tim, tell me more about this magical decade. Oh, I can't because we've gone too long. My voice is See, dying. what happened in 1977? <laughs> okay. All right. Do we have any mail this week, Tim? <clears throat> no mail. Uh, There's just a lot of people sending me notes because they follow me on Letterboxd, and they get to see my reviews of the movies we watch. They're always a half a star. <laughs> Every movie uh, I watch on Steady Bimco, except for White Christmas, is half a star. Really? Even Boggy Creek? Maybe one star. So no mail we could share. So I guess now it falls to me to choose our next film. Yes, Sensei. Now, as I mentioned up front, we are going through right now. It's a kind of exciting time. It's a very exciting time. Steady BIM Coverse. It is. <laughs> uh, we're doing a state-by-state tour of regional filmmaking. Tim's been scattering around. I'm trying to I I'm trying to be a little bit more alphabetical to make sure I don't miss any states. So I'm actually starting at the very beginning. Representing the state of Alabama. Uh oh. Uh, we're going to do a movie called What Waits Below. Wow. What Waits yep, Below? It's available in its entirety on YouTube. What? What Waits I better write it down. Below. Yeah. Uh, what Waits Below What Waits Below is from 1985. Ooh. Yeah. So it'll be all sorts of CG. Uh like computer generation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. In nineteen eighty five? Probably not. <laughs> We've talked so long. I'll tell you this. The uh, tagline is this, Tim, just to give you a sense of what we're watching here. Underground, no one can hear you die. Yeah. Underground Ooh, in Alabama. That, That's huh? a, there's a swamp in Alabama. So, yeah, what's going on underground? Yep. All right. So you can follow us on yep. all the socials. We're just not – I'm not on Facebook or, or that Twitter thing. L- love us and like us. Give us a five-star reviews and recommend us to a friend. <clears throat> recommend us to the people who do that podcast called – Things that'll blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I, I, uh, I couldn't in good conscience mention Seti Bimco because of Tim's predilection for mentioning Nazis, oh, like I said. But, <laughs> but if you somehow, I'm, if you found this and you come listen to me, I'm not the same George O'Connor on that <laughs> podcast. So send us a letter. Send it. Seti Bimco with an E at gmail.com. You, at the you'll end. win prizes. At like, uh, like, I hope George sent that postcard. Better mind it. Yeah. Totally. Send that postcard to our winner. I definitely did. All right. Cut it off. We'll Cut it see off. See you next week right. for Alabama. See, is, he, is that it? Alabama. He said all you want to say? Below. Okay. Yes. Bye. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party Line. It's a party line. Oh. I looked earlier. <laughs> I can see Where did it I'm looking I'm looking for the window I can cut that out <laughs> What's No you have to keep that burp in That was Because <laughs> That was unbelievable Come on
Now you keep it in. Oh, here it is. <laughs>